Considered the oldest family name in Chicago pizza, Lou Malnati's is as rich in history as its pizza is in flavor. Lou got his start in the 1940s working in Chicago's first deep dish pizzeria. Lou Malnati took his pizza expertise to Lincolnwood, a northern suburb of Chicago, where he and his wife Jean opened the first Lou Malnati's pizzeria on March 17, 1971. My dad worked downtown at Pizzeria Uno and Due for 22 years alongside of my grandfather thinking that he was going to inherit that, uh, you know, kind of aspiring restaurant chain and found out, uh, just as he turned right, right near his 40th birthday, he found out that, in fact, he was not going to uh, ever be the owner. And he decided, well, if that's the case, I'm going to leave and start on my own while I still am young and still have energy. So he, he decided, you know, I'm going to start a whole new deal. I'm going to start in the suburbs versus in the city. And it was about 14 months later that he opened in Lincolnwood. And it was, uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was funny because we opened on St. Patrick's Day, so it was an Irish holiday in a Jewish neighborhood, and we were opening an Italian restaurant. And back then, that was, uh, um, you know, the, uh, restaurants weren't on every corner like they are today. I mean, we're talking almost 40 years ago. and. Uh, it was a big deal in Lincolnwood. People lined up out the out the door, down the block, around around the building. Uh, they they really welcomed Lou Malnati's into the neighborhood, and people came from far and wide to eat Chicago pan pizza in the suburbs. I remember going over there. We had a pre uh, party, um, and we were able to invite all of our friends. So I invited like my group of kids that I was playing basketball with, and we went over there for the pre party, and. Uh, just remember the um, the excitement of, of my dad doing something uh, on his own, um, and uh, remember the kids running around like crazy and eating pizzas and uh, and just uh, what it was going to be like to open up uh, our own family business. Lou was known for his fun-loving character as well as making Chicagoland's best pizza. In 1978. Lou Malnati met with an untimely death when he fell victim to cancer. My dad died. He was very young. He was 48 years old. Uh, and it was only seven years after he had opened Malnati's. We had three stores at the time. And, uh, you know, here's this guy who was a big, strong, you know, 250 pound, six footer uh, ex Marine Staff Sergeant who was, you know, so alive and strong. and and big, 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 booming voice, and uh, the life of the party kind of guy. And then cancer just undid him over a period of a couple of years. He was flamboyant. He was a, a good restaurant man. He loved the business. I think he felt like he was on stage when he was here. Everybody loved him, and uh, he gave that love back to everybody that walked in the door. When anybody walked in the door, they were Lou's friend. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was hard after he passed away. Uh, people, people missed him. People still come up and talk, talk to me about him. Well, my dad, uh, unfortunately, died when I was 18. And for the first uh, 11 years of my life, um, he worked 4 in the afternoon till 4 in the morning. So. Um, didn't see him much. You know, by the time he, we were getting home from school, he was leaving for work. Um, and then the one day that he had off a week, he usually would go out, you know, with his buddies or, you know, with, with my mother. And, you know, so kind of grew up not really knowing my dad much. But in sixth grade, um, when he opened up his own store, um, out of necessity, Mark and I were working most every day. So we got to see my dad in a whole different light. We would, uh, um, bus boy or answer the phones or run pizzas up to the front and uh, got to see my dad in a work environment and uh, you know he had a lot of gifts he had uh, um, a gift for leadership 
um, where he had people that uh, were, were so loyal to him, they would do anything for him, his employees. He created great loyalty. Um, he was a uh, great chef. Um, you know, so not only you know, did he understand pizza, but he understood all kinds of food. And uh, I think his dream was probably to open up a, a restaurant someday that would feed about 20, 30 people. It would be off of his menu. He'd make whatever he wanted to make. You could come in and eat it. And he'd sit down and eat it with you. I mean, I think that was kind of his dream. But he loved, uh, he was a great entertainer. He had a gift uh, um, for uh, hospitality. And, uh, and he had a great work ethic. I mean, he uh, lived the American dream. He came here from Italy with nothing, couldn't speak English. Um, and then when he passed away at 48, he had uh, you know, grown, uh, he wound up doing his own thing um, without a lot of money. He you know, got borrowed a couple dollars from a couple friends and uh, put together his own restaurant and uh, made it work. And, uh, and I, you know, I'm not sure it would be as big as it was or as big as it is right now with him because he had kind of an old school mentality where he had, uh, he ran everything and he just gave key people a key that they could open and close, but he was the guy, he was everybody's boss. So, you know, the management theory classes that my brother and I were able to take, you know, my brother being an excellent manager, an excellent leader, an excellent grower, an excellent visionary, you know, I think the fact that uh, we were a generation removed allowed us to, you know, kind of get gifts that my dad wasn't able to have because of education or because of the environment that he grew up in. Um, so, but he did, uh, he did a lot with what he was given. Malnati's success comes from their commitment to quality. Every Lou Malnati's pizza is handmade from scratch using the finest and freshest ingredients. Although they keep the recipe a secret, they are willing to show just how a Lou Malnati's pizza is made. So initially, you want to take the dough and you want to just kind of, you know, kind of hold it in your hands and, you know, and fluff it a little bit. You want to be very gentle with it. And then you want to just start kind of patting it around the sides of the pizza. And, and you want to just ease it toward the, toward the edges and you know, kind of, kind of uh, flatten it out, and then gently pull it up, pull it up the side. You want to be careful not to create any holes as you do that, because uh, holes will let some of the uh, some of the liquid flow through and burn the bottom of the pizza. And now, after that, we'll we'll put a layer of cheese, you know, just slice by slice, all over the pizza, and then on top of it, we'll we'll place sausage and. And we want to we want to get a heavy layer of sausage on, but we still want the cheese to be able to bubble through the sausage, so it's not a it's not a pancake or anything. Uh, um, and then finally, we want to we want to ladle out a, a little tomato sauce, and the tomato sauce has big chunky whole tomatoes in it, and and we'll squeeze those and you know on top of the pizza. We love the freshness. The the, the that feature is important in a Lou Malnati's pizza. And then we'll sprinkle some, some seasoning on there, some uh, grated Parmesan and Romano cheese and, and oregano and uh, you know, some other little secret seasonings. And we'll get it in the oven for roughly 20 minutes to 30 minutes and, and uh, out will come a little taste of heaven. First time Malnati's customers fall in love after the first bite. It's the fresh ingredients and perfect flaky, buttery crust that create such a wonderful experience that keeps them coming back. I'll tell you, when someone bites into a Chicago pizza, a Lou Malnati Chicago pizza for the first time, and all those different flavors just kind of explode in your mouth, at one, you know, just kind of a little symphony going on in your mouth. It is like, a, it is a feeling that you have never, ever experienced before. And, that's why people come back, you know. It, that's why they come back again and again every time they visit town, or, or, uh, or every time they're they're near Malnati's. It's you know, it it, it sort of, it sort of has this magnetic charge, which is kind of, we kind of draw you in, can't get away from it. Just, it just explodes in your mouth. I mean, you have all this wonderful flavor, and my favorite has always been onion and green pepper. It's a wonderful flavor, and the cheese just melts in your mouth, and the crust is wonderful. And you have to taste the crust because when the crust is good, the pizza is good. It's just, uh, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I love it. I've been eating it all these years, and I can't, I can't go more than 
two or three days without having pizza. When you taste it, it's fresh. Um, and you get all these kind of like hits of flavors, depending on what you order and what you like, but whether it's you know the texture and the taste of that dough um, that's kind of flaky yet a little crunchy, and the gooiness and the salt of the cheese and the sweetness of the tomato, and the sausage, it's not like a spicy, you know, hot kind of sausage. It's just, it's a mild, but has a little, you know, something to it. And so you kind of get all these explosions in your mouth. And, uh, and for me, you know, when I started eating it, it was like, oh, I, you know, I just can't get enough of this, you know. And I weighed 50 pounds less too at the time. <laughs> but that's what happens when you're around pizzerias for good pizzerias for 20-some years. So um, it just, I think, just, you know, excites all the taste buds in your mouth and gets them going, so. For me, um, when I was at college, uh, there was no shipping, you know, back then. You know, you could take a pizza back with you or something, but I couldn't wait till I got home uh, from college because the first thing I did is stop at the Lincolnwood store. My dad would always be there, order a small pizza, and just devour it. You know, and everybody's got their favorite uh, ingredients. At the time, mine was cheese and onion. I just wanted cheese and onion. Um, and just thinking about it and you know the smell that permeates like the outside of the store when you walk in you just smell it and you crave it and um, and that feeling's never gone you know I eat it three times a week now and uh, um, you know enjoy it as much as I did the first time I ate it but uh, um, there's nothing quite like eating you know the perfect uh, buttery gooey uh, sweet um, taste of a Lou Malnati's deep dish pizza. With Chicago being one of the best cities to eat in, Malnati's is faced with lots of competition, especially in the pizza industry. So what separates Lou Malnati's from other pizzas? Um, I think the thing about Lou Malnati's, why we're different, one is our crust, that's what a lot of our customers say. And there tends to be a flaky, crispy, um, yet not too hard, it's kind of interesting. It's it's got this crunch to it, but it's flaky at the same time. And so I think that that's one of the reasons, and the second most common reason I hear is our tomatoes. And we go out to the growers, in the case of tomatoes in California, every year we send a crew out there to, to wait for the tomatoes to be, you know, the reddest, the sweetest, as good as they can be. And we say, okay, pack our tomatoes right now for the year. And we'll pack, you know, hundreds of, you know, I mean, We'll pack for days out there to, to give us the number of cans of tomatoes we need for the year. We have a, a single person in Wisconsin that makes all our cheese, all our mozzarella cheese. And uh, not only does he make our cheese uh, just for us, but um, we are probably 50% of all of his business. So that uh, he's very invested in making sure that he does it exactly the way we like it done. And uh, when we visit him, um, you know, he's telling us all the different things that they are doing, and uh, we're telling him exactly what's been going well and, you know, things we have to tweak. But, you know, when it comes to mozzarella cheese, we have it now that we have the exact uh, uh, fat content that we want, you know, to, you know, the you know, hundredth percentile. Uh, we know exactly the date that we want the cheese to be uh, sliced. We know the, exactly the time frame that we want to use that cheese. And again, you know, um, I don't think many people are going to that type of extreme. So we have wonderful people that work with us and, and they, uh, they make the pizzas with love. I think that, and we have never changed our recipe. We have always used the best ingredients. And I think that's what, what it comes down to. The pizza has become so popular that starting in 1987, Lou Malnati's has shipped its pizzas all over the country. The company now ships more than 250,000 pizzas throughout the year. People kept coming into the restaurant and saying, oh, I got to take pizzas to New York, I got to take pizzas to Los Angeles. And Rick said, you know, why can't we figure out a way that we can ship the pizzas because uh, it would be a lot easier. You know, Lou to go was, uh, you know, just a, an idea that uh, blossomed out of uh, noticing how many people would come into our stores, and uh, we had, again, an innovative, innovative idea. We had a box made so that you could fit our small pizzas in a box. So people would come in, and there were five pizzas that would fit in that box, and they would take frozen pizzas, put them in the box, and take them to O'Hare and fly all over the country. 
And right at that time, um, FedEx was a company that was, uh, you know, competing probably with UPS, but their deal was everything next day. So now all of a sudden you weren't doing UPS ground, you know, kind of, you know, three or four days around the country. You had this company that was shipping things next day. Uh, Lou to go is a, a, a tremendous concept that uh, was developed probably about, well, I, I say we've been doing it 15 years, 20 years now, and uh, people were people were taking pizzas on airplanes and taking them to their friends around the country and and we were packing them up in boxes for them and and we thought you know maybe we could make a little little cottage industry out of this and so one christmas uh, my brother decided i'm going to take i'm going to just start uh talk, you know having all our staff talk about this and and give people an opportunity to to ship pizzas all over the country in time for uh, gift giving at christmas time I think actually in the beginning when we started, if a wait staff took an order, we actually gave them $5 per order. So a waitress could make an extra 50 if she took 10 a night or something like that. Um, and in the beginning, we wrote those labels out by hand and we made the, you know, it was just, it was a very, you know, small operation. And, you know, it was, got so crazy in the beginning, like more than demand than we expected that we were sitting in Rick's house next door at Lincolnwood, sticking labels on boxes and, um, Rick and Mark's mom was helping us, Jean, and, but the one thing was she'd be reading every, oh, look, this one's going to Virginia, happy birthday, so-and-so, and Rick would yell, Ma, will you, will you stop? You know, we, we don't have time to be reading every message, so. On our original ship day, I think we shipped 300 pizzas, and we hand-wrote every single uh, message, gift message, and my mom was out reading every message, oh, look at this, or, will you just get these pack packages done? But, you know, that first, uh, first year, we made a lot of mistakes, but, you know, like anything, you, you realize that it was serving a need, and, uh, you know, we tweaked it and trimmed it and fixed it, and, uh, you know, now it's a... Now it's a great uh, business. It was really, you know, really a fun and exciting kind of project, and it just grew and grew and grew, and then it grew to what it is now, where we send, you know, whether it's Carson's ribs or Vienna hot dogs, um, all the Eli's cheesecake. It's all kind of the tastes of Chicago. Um, whereas on this past year, we sent over 10,000 packages on the Monday before Christmas, which is our biggest shipping day. We do about for that whole Christmas season. We probably do somewhere between 65, probably about 65 percent of our business. So. Give the gift of great food, Chicago style. Send delicious Lou Malnati's pizza anywhere in the USA from $34.95. The gift of Lou Malnati's Chicago style pizza from $34.95. To order, call 1 800 Lou to go. That's 1 800 Lou to go. Lou Malnati's takes pride in their reputation and values. When you work for Malnati's, you become part of a family that truly cares, and not only for the customer's satisfaction, but also for their entire staff. I've worked for 27 years. My older brother was the first one in our family to work there, and he just actually reached 30 years this year. Um, but I have uh, four siblings, and all of us have worked there. Um, a couple of my cousins have worked there. My wife and her sister and her mother have worked there. And so you see pockets of families throughout our company. Um, and that happens from the kitchen to the wait staff to the phone staff. It's just, you know, and, so, and in some cases, we're in our third generation. We've had, you know, grandmothers, mothers, and kids now working in, at Melnati's. Um, and that, I think, describes what it's like working at Melnati's. It's a family. You know, I, I think the environment around Melnati's, whether it's in the office or in one of the stores, is, you know, it's just a, it's an environment of camaraderie, of teamwork, of, uh, of community. And people are committed to working with each other, to, to um, to sharing the truth with one another, to um, you know, pushing back on one another, to to helping each other grow, and that, that's an important component of of who we are and and what it means to work in this company. And we go to great length to kind of help people develop those those skills. You know, you always feel like. Um you have people on your side there. There are people there for you when you're, you know, whether it's work-related things or out of work, you know, related things. People are just there for each other, um, and you know, and the restaurant industry is kind of crazy. It's kind of, uh, you know, up and down. It's either too busy for the amount of people to handle or not enough. But you kind of go through a war together, and the people who make it out on the other side 
are that much closer together. But um, we do lose a few along the way too. I've got to be honest. But uh, anybody who's around and been around forever, I think, just feels like you know it's just a place where they belong and where they feel um, like a part of a, a great team. Whether it's visiting the restaurants weekly, ordering carryout, or having the pizza shipped across the country, Lumonati's customers are as loyal as any. You know, it's really interesting. We did uh, this Bobby Flay thing, you know, with uh, the Food Network uh, about a year and a half or two years ago, and uh, we'd sent out like an email to people. You know, they didn't know what it was. We didn't know what it was. It was a Bobby Th Flay throwdown, and uh, so we just invited them to come and. The amount of people that came in the middle of the week during a work day and wanted to be part of it um, was just amazing to me and how passionate and kind of crazed they were about Melnati's. And uh, one of the guys I personally know because I coached his son and, and he's just uh, an ambassador for Lumonati's. He's never worked for Lumonati's. He just had it growing up his whole life, loves it. Anytime he runs into somebody new or somebody from out of town, it's the place he has to bring them. and. You know, he promotes us better than maybe some of our own people do even because he just loves Melnati's. And so we have that kind of following and that kind of fan base and, uh, and it's great, you know, I mean, and that, you know, I think it goes hand in hand. We, you know, we love um, our customers and then in return we, we feel loved back by, you know, we've been accepted by so many different communities. We're in, you know, 20 some different communities in the Chicagoland area, so. For the past 38 years, Lou Malnati's has hosted an annual one-day event to raise funds for cancer research. One of the real neat parts about, you know, um, owning your own business is that, uh, you know, you carry on traditions and you create, you know, new uh, types of traditions. When my father was alive, he was uh, friends with uh, um, Brian Piccolo. And, Brian Piccolo was a guy who played for the Bears, was best friends with Gail Sayers, and you know, this goes back a ways, but Brian Piccolo wound up dying uh, from cancer. So when Piccolo died, he was such a young man, you know, just, you know, stolen, his prime was stolen from him. And, uh, and my dad thought, you know, w this would be a tremendous way to, to honor Piccolo, uh, to have a party that would raise money for, uh, to, to send a boy to Wake Forest University in his name. And so the first year we closed the restaurant down on a Monday night, uh, all, invited all our friends and, and all the players came out from the team and, and it was just a raucous good time party. People paid $25 or, or something and, and uh, they were able to raise about $25,000 to send to Wake Forest University in the name of Piccolo, send a boy. Uh, and that, that was enough back then to pay for a four-year scholarship. In the years following, uh, the event grew and they were able to also raise money for uh, cancer research. And as it evolved, and, you know, and now it's been nearly 40 years, we raise money specifically for cancer research and we fund uh, Northwestern Memorial Hospital in the city. We send money to Children's Memorial and also a little bit to Gilda's Club. We gave it here to Northwestern Memorial because we felt that if any of our friends or anyone that we knew that needed help could go there for cancer and get great doctors and uh, this has continued ever since then. Over the years we've raised over two million dollars for cancer and uh, we now are supporting the Brain Institute for Cancer Research down at Northwestern Memorial and Dr. James Chandler is one of the co-directors and he's one of our big promoters and he is on our board and we have wonderful people on our board who work very hard every year to raise money and we have an annual, an annual dinner and the last uh, three years we've had uh, Second City with Jim Belushi, oh, um, Jeff uh, Samarjan. Every year we uh, try to raise money and give a little bit back to, uh, the, you know, to fight the disease that killed Piccolo back in the day and then also killed Lou Malnati. In 1996, after nine successful restaurants, Lou Malnati's opened up their 10th restaurant in Lawndale. However, there was something different about this one. We also have been able to do something with a, a 
an impoverished area of Chicago that's Lawndale. And the, Lawndale was a, a thriving community before Martin Luther King got shot. Uh, and at that time, uh, the residents kind of burned down the neighborhood and it's never, never come back. It was one of the poorest neighborhoods. It was in the top 10% um, poorest neighborhoods in the country, not in Chicago, not in the country. And uh, it was one of those neighborhoods that back in the 60s with the riots, the race riots and all that, um, they used to sell jewelry and it was jewelry stores and things like that, got burnt out and then they just left it, they didn't rebuild. It's, uh, I think, one of Mark and Rick's it's a dedication for them to give back to the community over there. And uh, it's kind of fun to go over there and work once in a while. The help are wonderful. The people that come in are great. Lawndale came to us and said, you, you've got nine restaurants so far. I've, I've polled my entire community, and the thing we really need in this community that's trying to kind of dig itself out from, the, from you know, kind of a poverty kind of under-resourced situation down there is a neighborhood that got devastated during the Democratic uh, Convention riots, you know, back in the 60s and hadn't really rebuilt itself yet. And said, so, you know, we need a family restaurant. What would you do, what would you guys consider uh, opening your 10th store and kind of tithing it back to the community, honoring the Old Testament principle of tithing? We had a group of African-American women that uh, uh, moved with my father from Pizzeria Uno to uh, Lou Malnati's in Lincolnwood. And those women's homes were in Lawndale. So when we went back to Lawndale, um, it was not only giving back to the community, but it was giving back to our employees. And those same women uh, were so delighted to see a family restaurant open up in, in their community, and it was Lou Malnati. So we were giving back to the community, giving back to them. And, th and those are things that are, uh, you know, unique about owning your own business and able to do things uh, that you like to do. And although it still hasn't been a success financially, um, there's been a lot of great success stories uh, out of that store. And Getting guys back to work, getting guys ready to enter the job force, because jobs are, jobs are, are, are the most important thing we can offer uh, people, who, people who are poor, people who don't have uh, what others have, if they have a job, then you know that can give them dignity. That can get them on their feet. That can support their family. That can that can you know create a life not only for them but for their family and for for the future. Guys, some of those guys will never have a chance. They have a felony on their record, or they have a record, and they're not going to get a chance anywhere. And uh, and we've given some of those guys a chance. So it's just kind of a cool part of Milnati's also, which I think talks about the spirit of who we are also, so. Milnati's currently has 30 restaurants throughout the Chicagoland area. With such great success, where do they go from here? Will they expand to other states or will they keep it local? Now, there's something about having to go to Chicago to get Chicago pan pizza that, uh, that I like. And, if you, don't, and if, you don't, if you can't do that, you can have a ship it to you. Get ready for a brand new day. Hey, Chicago.